Hello everyone, my name is Sarah and I teach a comparative anatomy lab. Today's video is the shark digestive system. For this video, I'm going to show you a series of photos from a shark dissection. I'm ha I have all of the parts of the digestive system labeled very nicely for you to see. They're all laid out very well. And then we'll also go over the function of each organ. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Whoa! Look at that mouth. Look at those teeth. Oh my God, I almost had a heart attack. I hope you guys are okay. So let's get down to the nitty gritty that is the shark digestive system. Digestion always begins with the mouth. Now in the case of humans, we masticate our food and mastication is the act of chewing. So we have mechanical digestion and we also have chemical digestion in the way of salivary amylase that is an enzyme that digests carbohydrates. Now sharks are very different in that sharks gulp rather than chew, and they also lack salivary amylase, so carbohydrate digestion does not begin in the mouth in the shark. So once the shark has gulped its prey, the food travels down the esophagus and into the stomach. Now inside the stomach is what's called gastric juice that contains acids and enzymes for chemical digestion. Also inside the stomach are what are known as rugae, which are just ridges that function in stomach expansion. Next, the food travels to the spiral intestine, which is basically their equivalent of the small intestine. And this is where absorption of nutrients and toxins take place. The duodenum is the first part of the spiral intestine. Food enters the duodenum through what's known as the pyloric sphincter or the pylorus, and it's just this muscle that expands and contracts to control the passage of food from the stomach into the duodenum. Now notice the spiral valve on the inside of the intestine. This is where it gets its name. This spiral valve functions in the same way that the folding of our small intestine functions. So our small intestine is actually a very long organ that's just been folded to fit in the body cavity. Now the reason why the small intestine is so long is to increase the amount of time for absorption take, to take place. So the spiral valve inside their intestine functions in the same way to increase the amount of time for absorption to take place. Next, the food travels into the colon, which is in essence the large intestine. This is where water absorption occurs. The final part of the colon is the rectum and then waste is expelled through the cloaca. And the cloaca, if you recall, is the hole that both excretory waste, genital waste, and digestive waste gets expelled from the body. So in humans, we have an anus for digestive waste, and we also have a urethra for excretory and genital waste. So they only have one hole for all of that. So now we're gonna move on to accessory organs, beginning with probably one of the most important, the liver. Now the liver is the site of detoxification via the hepatic portal system. So if you guys recall, the hepatic portal system is this vein that is gathering the blood from the GI tract and taking it back up to the liver to be detoxed. Because if you don't detox the blood, say you drink alcohol one night and you drink a lot of it, if your liver is not detoxifying your blood, you get alcohol poisoning. So it's very important for the liver to do its job in that case. The liver also functions in energy storage of glucose and it also produces bile. And bile is an emulsifier, which basically just means that it breaks down fat droplets to increase the surface area for enzymatic activity. Now I do want to point out that in the case of the shark, you've probably noticed if, you if you've touched its liver, but the liver is very oily. And that oil is actually called squalene, and it allows for buoyancy because the oil is lighter than water, but because the shark is heavier than water in general, the shark has to keep swimming in order for the, the squalene to do its job. And so remember that in the sharks, that oil allows for buoyancy. All right, so, the liver produces bile. That bile gets stored in what's known as the gallbladder. 
and the gallbladder releases that bile through the common bile duct. Now one note for the gallbladder, a good way to always identify it is that it always looks like a blister, a blister on the surface of the liver. So if you find a blister, that is your gallbladder. You may also be able to identify it based on color, not all the time, but bile is green. And so if you see a green blister on the liver, you are definitely looking at the gallbladder. All right, so the next organ is the spleen. And the spleen produces, stores, and breaks down blood cells. Now, for the shark, this is a major part of their immune system. Our immune system is very complex. It involves a lot of different processes. For the shark, however, the spleen is the main part, or just a major part of their immune system. Moving on to the pancreas. Now the pancreas has an exocrine function, which means it releases pancreatic juices that help chemical digestion. So it releases these enzymes into the duodenum of the small intestine through the pancreatic duct. Now, if you think about this, this is a really good way to always be able to identify the pancreas. Because you know the pancreas is releasing enzymes into the duodenum, it is always gonna be near the duodenum. So if, when in doubt, look for the duodenum of the small intestine. Also, the pancreas is generally, it, it has a very unique texture to it. It looks like a chewed up piece of gum that someone just spit into the body cavity. Now that rule doesn't quite work for the shark, the shark pancreas doesn't necessarily look like a chewed up piece of gum, but for most, most organisms it actually does. Now the pancreas also has an endocrine function, which is regulating blood sugar via the release of insulin or glucagon. Now, last but not least, the rectal gland. This is also known as the salt gland because it removes salt from the blood. So that is everything for the shark digestive system that you need to know. If you have any questions, please let me know. I also made a quiz video testing your digestive knowledge that you are certainly welcome to use. And I've also made other videos for the digestive system of the mud puppy and the cat. So I really hope this helps you. Thanks.